Hey there, I'm Victoria, a certified Christian life coach, author, motivational speaker, and university educator, and I am obsessed with helping you navigate through life's ups and downs so that you can live day by day in God's peace despite the many external demands on your time and energy. The Choose to Think Inspirational podcast is about the delicate dance between God transforming you from the inside out and your personal responsibility for change, maturity, and refinement as a Christ follower. On the show, I'll help you connect the between your faith and your life in practical, meaningful ways while giving God room to do what only He can do and so that you can shine your light for Christ and be better equipped to serve your family and help others around you. You can change every area of your life one thought at a time. Welcome back to the Choose to Think Inspirational Podcast Brain Changer. Let's dive in. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the Choose to Think Podcast. The first verse of Psalm 9 got my attention. It goes like this. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. And it got me to wondering, are there any other occasions in the Bible where the phrase all my heart is used? I thought, what else should you and I do with all our heart? First, all really means all. It means everything, the whole kit and caboodle, the whole lot of your heart. God, in this case, refers to the name of Jehovah, the one true existing God. And heart refers to that inner man, mind, will, heart, and understanding, the seat of your emotions and passions, your thinking. So what does God's word tell you to do with all your heart? Quite a few things. He says to praise Jehovah, the one true God with all your heart. That's from Psalm 9. Serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your heart and with all your soul. Turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You get the pattern here? Keep the commandment and the law with all your heart. Walk in obedience with all your heart. Hold fast to God with all your heart. Turn back to God with all your heart and take hold of God's words with all your heart. The question is this, do you praise God, serve him, love him, turn to him or turn back to him, keep his commandments and laws, hold fast to him and take hold of his words with all your heart? Gosh, if I ask myself this very question, I may might say something like, mm, I try. And then I got to thinking, well, okay, so we all probably try, right? But what does this mean in the day-to-day of it all? It means we keep a careful watch on our thoughts and the words we say in all scenarios. And here's a pickleball story for you. Recently, I was so consumed with anger, disappointment, and disgruntledness with how I was playing pickleball that I told my husband, Jim, I was done. It's not worth it anymore, Jim, I pleaded to him. It's no fun anymore. I hate playing, really, especially if I can't win. And what was I thinking that morning at the pavilion in Georgetown as I played? Well, I had thoughts and actions like this. I can't believe we're going to lose to these opponents as I hit a ball out of bounds. Or I thought, I can't believe my partner missed that shot. He really isn't playing his best. As I hit a drop, like my third shot drop, and it actually dropped right into the net. About this, I was thinking, I hate losing, especially to her. She's as competitive as I am. I know I'm a better player. I was having that thought as she aced me on her serve. And down I went with my thoughts. The end result, absolute aberrance and loathing for my extremely poor attitude. Oh, I was fit to be tied. I really had, I was in a funk. I had to really work out of it. But why? Why was it so upsetting to me? You can see how ugly it was, right? And it's because I want to shine my light for Christ. I want to be such a good model for him in my words and behavior. Other people know I'm a Christian. They know I host the Choose to Think podcast. They're watching me. And then, of course, there's my husband and my children. Eyes on me, right? And what am I doing? What am I saying? How am I behaving? What kind of witness am I being? Where's my humility, right? Gosh, I tell you, pickleball is bringing out the worst in me. But truly, I am grateful because I need all this junk out of my heart and mind. I really, really, truly don't want it in there. You know, it reminds me of when I was a young mother and I so longed to have more patience. Raise your hand if you're a young mother who would say, yes, that's me. I need more patience with all these kids. I prayed for patience, agonized over wanting patience, begged God to take my impatience from me, begged God to create in me a pure heart and a mouth that uttered words that were pleasing in God's sight. 
and let's just say epic fail. It's taken a long time for me to get the patience that I so <laughs> desperately wanted. There was this one woman in our homeschooling co-op who was such a saint. She had like, I don't know, 10 billion children, right? I so wanted to be like her. She was calm, soft-spoken, and godly in her relationships. She really was. Nothing seemed to get under her skin. It was absolutely perplexing. She was patience personified. And then there was me, stuck in my own impatience and pity party on how God was taking his good old time healing me from just one of many character flaws. <sighs> Same thing here with pickleball. Matter of fact, there's this lady at pickleball. We're just going to call her Sally, who week after week has a smile on her face. She is glowing, absolutely radiant. She has a bounce in her step even. She's swift on her feet, strong with her swings, she plays so competitively, and she's a great partner to have. Nothing seems to ruffle her at all. I told Jim a few weeks ago, I'm like, I got to discover her secret. I know she has to be a Christian. She's my hero. She's amazing. She's just beautiful in her countenance. She laughs a lot, and yet she plays so hard. So one day, I got the gumption to ask her about all of these things. I said, Sally, could I ask you a very personal question you don't have to answer? And to which she just simply smiled and nodded. Are you a Christian? And she sweetly nodded again. Yes, I am a Christian. You know, and then I thought, I knew it. I knew it. Of course you are, I said. Not that folks who aren't Christ followers can't demonstrate good attitudes. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that she was all of who I wanted to be. I wanted to be all of those things that I saw in her and I didn't know how she actually got it. And curiously enough, it's because of her faith in Christ and the work that he's done in her life. So I continued to tell her everything I've said to you about how she plays and seems to enjoy the sport, how she's got a great attitude, how her smile is so endearing, how she seems so genuine on the court. And then I ask her, how do you keep such a great mindset while you're playing? She said, I have one objective. You know I'm 66 years old, and all I want to do is sweat. I figure if I can sweat, then this has been so good for my body. Yep, I was just about mm, dumbstruck. So I went on. Second, I asked her, but what if your partner really isn't playing that well? To which she said, oh, I know they're doing their best, just like I do my best. You know, I really enjoy having fun while playing with so many different types and levels of players. Ugh, sigh. Again, I was like, oh, I want to be like that. And then finally I said, okay, so what if you are not playing your best? Do you ever get down on yourself? Or like, you know, what do you say to yourself? And how's this going? And you know, I expected something so positive again, and this is where I was really leaning in, to which she almost flippantly answered, when I'm not playing well, well, I just tell myself I suck. <laughs> and that's a true story. And we both laughed. And I thought, golly, gee, it was such a great answer, really. She doesn't take herself so seriously like I do. Gosh, I want to love God with all my heart and soul. Do you? Do you long to please him with your mind? Remember that definition? With your thinking, your memory, your reflections, your determination, your resolution, and with the seat of all your emotions and passions? And I thought, how can I better praise God with all my heart and mind? You know, give him thanks when I'm playing pickleball. How could I actually do that with all my heart? And I know what I have to do. I must change my inner dialogue. I must stop being self-focused and learn to become more God-focused during play. It really is just that simple. Now, I will say that I've already confessed my sinful behavior and my dire need for God to change me on the inside out. Although Psalm 9 isn't about David's repentance, really, it's really not about that at all, but rather how, how David was expressing how God is just and righteous. I was still so captivated by that first sentence of this poem. And I wonder, God, help me to apply this in my life in a practical way. Where am I not really praising you with all my heart? And to my mind or from my guilt, God dropped on my heart the area of pickleball. 
So what thoughts might I engage instead that would better reflect my deepest desire to thank God and praise him with all my heart? So I wrote these words down on a piece of paper. It's almost like a prayer to him, that constant dialogue that we're having. I want to check those one thoughts, check them, just check them at the door. I don't even want them coming into my mind and my brain. And I certainly don't want to give them mental energy and attention. I don't want them charging up and lighting up my brain. No, I want these thoughts instead. Thank you, Lord, for giving me an able body to play pickleball or any sport for that matter. I praise you that I have a mind that is functioning, that my brain loves it when I engage in eye-hand coordination tasks. I thank you that I can think thoughts that are healthy and true. I thank you that I get to hang out with my friends and do something with my husband that he also enjoys. I praise you that we had the gasoline in our car to get over to this place to play in the first place. Thank you, Lord, for giving me breath to rejoice in this new day that you have made. Now, my prayer then actually also to to the Lord says something like this. Lord, help me have the mind of Christ. Help me to have attitudes and the meditations of my heart that are pleasing to you. Help me to get my eyes off of myself and my pathetic attitudes and thoughts that I'm having and turn my eyes instead to you. Help me to focus more on encouraging other players than hitting the court with the purpose to win. Eliminate my all or nothing black or white thinking. Help me to trust you, Lord. You'll remember that's my word for the year, trust, which also in part means to fully lean on, to commit your way to him and let God do the work here. So help me to trust you, Lord, that you will do this good work in my heart and mind. I'm only human, Lord, a mere mortal, but this doesn't excuse behavior that is lacking the salt and light to win others to you. Change me, Lord. Help me be transformed by the renewing of my mind. So what about you? Is there an area of your life for which you would love transformation or change? Maybe it's with a particular health initiative or an attitude or emotion that really gets the best of you. Maybe you're consumed by S-E-L-F these days and the joy is just zapped out of you. Peace, you say. I haven't had peace in my life for so long. It's okay. Get those thoughts down on paper. Take a deep dive into what is really the main issue here. Confess and repent if you need to. God is your refuge and your shelter during times of transformation. He won't leave you. He'll never forsake you. Can you try instead to praise him like I'm going to do and begin thanking him in the meantime like I'm going to do too? Can you be glad and rejoice in his very name? Can you seek him in a new way? Recognize that you are needy and afflicted. God will come to your rescue if you'll just call on him. Now, let the words of this psalm wash over your heart and mind. Be encouraged, friend. Let's listen together to this psalm. Psalm 9, the NIV version. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you. For you have upheld my right and my cause, sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the peoples with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. He does not ignore the cities of the afflicted. Lord, see how my enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death. 
that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead, all the nations that forget God. But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord. Do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. I want to read to you what one commentator said. His name is William Copter, Copter, C-O-W-P-E-R, and he was writing in 1612. And of this very verse, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. He says this, as a vessel by the scent thereof tells what liqueur is in it, or like liquid, so should our mouths smell continually of that mercy wherewith our hearts have been refreshed, for we are called vessels of mercy. And that's the end of that quote. I love that because I want to have that scent and that fragrance of the Lord. I want the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart to be pleasing in God's sight. And where I fail, I know that God will step in and do a healing work in my heart. He will do the same for you. Let's you and I not stop doing what is right before God. And as we close, please know that in your own pursuit to take every thought captive, I'm here for you. If you just want a friend to bounce things off of, shoot me an email at choose to think at gmail.com. And that's with the number two, choose to think at gmail.com to arrange a free mentoring session with me. I take so many a month. So get on, get on the calendar now as soon as you can. I also call this a thought strategy session where we get down to the nuts and bolts of things for you. It may not be pickleball at all, but it could be something like your thoughts about your husband, your friend, or the berating things you actually may be saying to yourself and believing about yourself. I'm here to help. You grab your coffee and I'll get mine. and We'll just have a gal pal chat. Now, this is a lifelong process. I've learned a lot over the seven years, and I'm sure I can help you find a bit of clarity and direction for handling some of life's sticky situations. Otherwise, please take good care and be sure to tune in this Monday for part six in our series on cognitive distortions. It's all about magnification and oh boy, I can't wait for you to hear what's in store for you on that episode. Thank you so much for pressing play on this episode today and may God bless you as you put him first in your life and in your mind. I love you. And that's a wrap, Brain Changer. And listen, if you like what you hear, would you leave us a one to two sentence review at Apple Podcasts, share the link with a friend, or tag me on your share on social media? It would mean the world to me and would help us to keep shining the light of Christ and sharing the good news to others who are in need of encouragement. Please visit us on our website at choose to think.co. That's with the number two, choose to think.co, to get on our monthly newsletter list. And if you need a guest speaker for your next women's retreat or church event, I'm your gal. Email me at choose to think at gmail.com. And that's with the number two, choose to think at gmail.com. Finally, I offer limited free mentoring sessions each month where you and I can chat to help you develop a strategy for your thoughts in any area of your life. I'm a certified life coach and I have something to share. Visit choose to think.co and click on mentoring for more details. Also, keep in mind that the messages on this show are for informational and educational purposes only. Please consult your medical doctor for all medical issues. Thank you again for tuning in. God bless you.